Okay, so what is this yield? Let's let's go back to the top level assembly now. So now I've got my top level assembly that has in it one skeleton that is effectively divided into multiple subgroup uh, uh, pieces to allowing for many, many groups to develop and design simultaneously, knowing that the result will fit, allowing the uh, uh, release of component parts before the assemblies get released in a, uh, a very, very uh, succinct and manageable methodology. <laughs> so, top-down design. I hope a little of this made sense to you. Not all of them. See, uh, Dave asks, are all the are all the coordinate systems in the top level skeleton? No, the the, the skeletons in uh, uh, the coordinate systems in the top level are only the coordinate systems required for that level in your assembly. You see, each subsequent skeleton assembly could indeed have a top as well as sub scales to define its substructure. And you can imagine an assembly like this would have lots and lots of layers, if this were even real. But, uh, but you know, it, the assemblies that you guys deal with are real, and as you know, they are effectively divided into sub-assemblies and sub-assemblies and sub-assemblies. Each sub-assembly controls that level and nothing more. Why don't we take a, a bold step here and where has it go? Boldly go. What if, what if this uh, right now, right now, oh, and by the way, I did the top one in meters and everything else is in inches. You can do that because it's broken up. So each individual section or skeleton has its own unit system. And so this one at 49 meters, what if it uh, really needs to be, I don't know, give me a number. How about uh, uh, 50? So it's going to move out to 52, and if I regenerate the top level assembly right now, drum roll please, is the warp drives going to move out? Is the nacelles going to move out? Are all the parts associated with that nacelle going to update? Are the panels going to change? Are all those ribs going to move? What has to happen in order to make this happen? All of that. All of that and more. Will the original picture that I used to sketch this thing update? Ah, good, good answer. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. And you may, at some point, uh, probably not very far in, just strip out the picture because it has given up its usefulness. <clears throat> the difference between a standard skeleton and a motion skeleton, the only difference, well, there's actually quite a few differences. A skeleton, a regular skeleton, is a part. A motion skeleton is an assembly. Okay, now the intended use of a motion skeleton is to define components that work in a mechanism. That's the intended use. But um, I didn't use it that way here. That wasn't the point. The idea was, can we break up an, a, a skeleton into sub-skeletons? And using the motion skeleton allows that to happen. And what's the result? Look at there, it moved out and all the substructure updated. Thanks for your attention. I'll be sticking around. Thanks a lot.